Um, okay, you've got a few jumpers. So uh, with the previous reading, I feel like there is going to be a situation where we are taking a relationship to the next level, where two people are going to have, you know, big conversations, heartfelt communication and soulful communication about uh, what are we going to do with our relationship? What's in store? What's next? And uh, what is that going to look like? I feel like somebody is giving you a concrete idea, vision, or picture of what the relationship looks like. They're not going to mince words. They're not going to dance around the topic. They're going to, they're not going to beat around the bush. They're going to paint you a realistic, a very attainable picture. And I feel like it's going to make you feel really safe and secure about the direction of your relationship and where the two of you are headed and whether or not, you know, the relationship is going to be able to get off the ground the way that you'd hope, okay? So I'm feeling for many of you, you're coming into the month of December already in a stable relationship. And if not in a stable relationship, then I feel like you're going to be in a situation where you will encounter new options, new choices. Okay, so let's talk about this and uh, I'm going to start here with the foundation. First of all, we have here the Ace of Cups and the Ace of Cups, this is the great love, the big love. This is uh, somebody that can really transform the way that you feel about love, the way that you feel about longevity in relationship, the way that um, you feel about even family planning. So what this means is that when you meet this person, I, I feel like they're in the foundation, they're already in your life. There's a lot of uh, mutual love and attraction and all of these things, but I feel like in a spiritual way, this is a person that is really teaching you about love and forgiveness and about, you know, how to be a better person. So I feel like some of you are learning a lot from a relationship partner. Some of you are like admiring your relationship partner because there are things that they're bringing to the table that you might lack. And likewise, you're bringing things to the relationship that they're lacking. So I feel like it's uh, all about mutual growth, okay? So there's a lot of potential here. It needs to be nurtured. It needs to be treated with kitty gloves. And it needs to be uh, continuously nourished so that the relationship can grow. What's linked up with it here is the chariot. And we got the chariot earlier. I definitely feel a lot of interracial couples, okay? I feel as well there is, um, it's like different cultural and um, different ideologies. You're growing up and, or I'm sorry, I can't speak. You have been uh, taught to be very, very different. So I feel like politically, you might be very, very different from each other. You might be polar opposites. Um, the way that you think, the way that you handle relationship um, issues, the way that you think about relationship. One person might be very traditional, wants to, you know, um, date for a year, get married, uh, move in together, then get married, and then have children, then, you know, live out the rest of your days together, don't believe in divorces, don't believe in abortion. So whatever the situation is, I feel like one person is... A certain way and the other person is like a polar opposite of it so you see these two horses they're moving in different direction and I'm also sensing despite moving in different directions you both are arriving at a consensus because at the heart of it there's a lot of love here and you feel that no matter what no matter how different we are we can still work things out we can still move the relationship forward so I'm sensing the two of you might have overcome a lot of um, obstacles in order to be together. And I feel as well, somebody might have had issues with, you know, drinking. And uh, they might have gone to AA, made themselves better. And because of it, I feel like they had a loving relationship partner that was emotionally supportive and got them through it. And I feel like some people might have battled depression. So it could be you, Gemini's, or another um, person. And I'm getting a very strong water sign vibe, especially Cancer. So I have here Scorpio, P 
Pisces, and in particular a Cancerian person, that might have over have to overcome a lot of inner struggles in order to make themselves better. And they're getting better because of your love and your emotional support, okay? Um, and it goes both ways. So this is a really beautiful energy. And I feel like, you know, it's it's like the last leg of the journey. It's not over yet, but you're going to get through it, okay? So it's it's like overcoming things, relationship obstacles. And I feel like a lot of inner tension and conflict in order to be together. Um, in the past, what we have here is a fire sign. We have here the Knight of Wands. And the Knight of Wands is uh, somebody who is fiercely independent. They don't like to be trapped in a monogamous relationship. They have trouble as well being in... Um, they have trouble staying still. They have trouble set, um, like settling down and laying down foundations and roots. They have a tendency to feel very claustrophobic. And I feel like they have a, a runner uh, aspect about them where when the relationship gets too cozy or too affectionate, they get a little bit scared. So I feel like you have a fire sign here in uh, your past. And fire signs are Sagittarius, Aries, or Leo, Sun, Moon, or Rising. And um, this is a person that is very, very difficult to touch or to be with on an emotional level because I feel like they're lighthearted. They tread through life very, very um, lightly. They're here today, gone tomorrow. And so you might have dealt with this person and you thought they were going to stay around. But I feel like, you know, here today, gone tomorrow. And it left you very, very hurt. And so you have been very protective and guarded with your heart. And you're just like, never again. I'm not going to leave myself vulnerable or exposed. What was I thinking? So I feel like some of you might have been um, heartbroken by this person. Some of you thought it was going to go the distance, but it's not really panning out that way. And I also feel like um, the relationship itself, it was very exciting. It started off in a burst of energy. And then I feel like it just fizzled out. And from their end, it's easier for them to recover, but I feel like from your end, you're still nursing a, a wound and you're still keeping yourself very close off. Which brings us to the present moment. We have here the Queen of Swords. And I feel like this is your energy where you are really, really craving love and affection. But I feel like you might play it off as if you, you might play, you know, um, the nonchalant role, like, oh, I don't really need that. I don't really need them. I don't really need, you know, relationship. I'm okay by myself. But I feel like deep down, you have been hurt, you have been wounded. And it's hard for you to show how vulnerable you are. It's hard for you to state what you want and attract what you want. Because I feel like there's this inner conflict within you where you love you want the love and the affection but when you communicate it almost feels like you're driving people away or you're so closed off that people find it very difficult to get to know you or to have emotional connections with you and i feel like some of you who are who have been burned in the past we have to let go of this energy okay it's linked up here with the devil and i believe this one is in the reverse position as well i believe so the devil is overcoming past fears. And this is like fears of getting hurt again. Overcoming negative people that are not good for you. Overcoming as well. Um, not letting people in that might be um, that might not be appropriate for you. So I have this fire sign here. And I feel like this is not a bad person. But I feel like they might not be the best relationship partner for you. The energy exchange is very strong between you because, you know, fire and air, it's a very dynamic mix. But I feel like somebody doesn't really want to be, is not ready to be loved, is not ready to give and to receive in equal amounts. And so just because somebody is not, you know, like this is a good person, I feel. And I feel like there's no harm in letting them back in your life. But if you're letting them back in your life, knowing that, it's not going to lead to a relationship. I feel like you're being smarter about it this time around. And you're being a little bit more, you know, 
I don't just want the fun and the excitement. I want an emotional connection. And so you're going to have to turn down and say no to some people. I'm sensing as well for some of you, uh, there might be an air sign here, an Aquarius, a Gemini or a Libra. And there's an element here about if it's an air sign that you're dealing with, I feel like there's a lack of chemistry, a lack of an emotional connection, a lack of that sense of like wanting to constantly be with the other person. I feel like there's an emotional lack here. So it might not be a bad person, but I just feel like they're, they're just, there's no chemistry, there's no spark. And then some of you, if you've you've been dealing with an air sign and there was a lot of deception, you're definitely getting over that. You're definitely moving on and you're definitely in a better state, okay? Crowning this reading is something that you are thinking about. I have here the Eight of Wands and the Eight of Wands is having a lot of communication from multiple sources, from multiple people that are soliciting you. So this is usually like, um, you know, Saturday night and a bunch of people are contacting you. Do you want to go out? Do you want to go to this place? Do you want to go here? Do you want to be with this group? Do you want to come with me? Or do you want to, you know, go with a bunch of us? So I feel like there's a lot of invitations that are in the picture for you or you are thinking about all of these invitations and your time is limited. Your energy is limited. So you're trying to figure out what's the best option so that I can, you know, go places where I can be seen and heard. And I'm also sensing for some of you, especially if you have recently broken up with somebody, you have all these invitations, but you have to turn them down because you don't want to run into that person that you've dated, possibly this air sign, Aquarius, Gemini or Libra. And I'm also feeling as well, you have to turn down some of these invitations because frankly, you're not in a point at a point where you want to date new people. You're not recovered yet, or I feel like you're not ready just yet to put yourself out there. Okay. And there, there's nothing wrong with that. And I feel like for a lot of you, um, if you're thinking about one person and you're trying to date another, many of you don't think that it's fair. And so just out of courtesy for the new person, I don't feel that you're going to date them because you don't want to be confused emotionally and you don't think it's fair for the new person. So moving forward, what we have here is the two of wands. For those of you in long distance relationships, there is a sense of coming together. So the two of wands is like travel voyages, things that extend beyond, you know, space, time. And what this means is um, if you're in a long distance relationship, there's going to be a sense of like coming together. There's going to be a sense here with the hierophant in the reverse position, um, a relationship that's on again, off again. And I feel like a lot of the times long distance relationship are considered on again, off again, because it's on when you see each other, when you physically are in the same location, and then it's off when you're far apart from each other. So if a relationship has been on again, off again, and especially if you are with somebody that um, had like a divorce or like a failed marriage or failed engagement under, under their belt, there's going to be this sense of reciprocity. So we have here the um, emperor. And what this means is you have a very solid, possibly an older relationship partner that is really, um, they're very smitten with you. This is a, a person that is very honorable, righteous. They say what they mean and they mean what they say, and you can hold them accountable for their words. So I feel like you, you have somebody in your, the picture that is like this. And for those of you who are in long distance relationship, if you're single, I feel the odds of you meeting somebody that might be a little bit further away from you. That might also be a little bit older than you or in a position of power in a position of prominence that's going to be coming into the picture as well um i'm sensing a lot of you know for um straight men out there that are dating women i'm also feeling um possibly being hit on by you know women that are significantly older and there's nothing wrong with that but you know just a heads up because i feel like the energy is two-sided it can go both ways and then i also feel as well if uh, whoever it is that you're attracted to, regardless of your gender, whoever it is that you're attracted to, I feel like you're, you might get approached by people that are a lot older 
they're very clear about what they want. They might have been like a divorcee. They might have been um, like I'm seeing widow or widower as well. And so people who are very clear about what they want. And I feel like they're soliciting you not just for a one night stand. They do want a relationship because they like what they see. And so just be prepared for that. Like people who are a lot older coming after you. Okay, I'm getting that, like, I've been getting that since the previous reading. And I feel overall that many of you, with the foundation with the, as the Ace of Cups, you're already coming into the month of December in a relationship. There are a few that have recently broken up and are trying to move on, but not yet ready. And I feel like, you know, you don't want to rush the process, the healing process. It differs for everybody, but you don't want to rush it. You don't want to shortchange yourself and you don't want to shortchange the new person. So enter new relationship with a clean slate and shed your emotional baggage before you move on. And I feel like some of you are in the process of doing that. Okay, so I'm going to leave it at that. Um, Oh, one last thing. I feel like somebody here is helping their relationship partner overcome some type of addiction as well. And it's going to it's going to take some time, but I feel like there is going to be a breakthrough because your partner is going to take uh control of his or her life again. So, it's coming after a lot of struggle, but it's going to be okay, all right? Um so Gemini's, I hope the reading has been helpful. Play, uh take care of yourself.